Hey everybody, Arizona Kid here. Uh, we got a video for you here on the Honda Foreman. Uh, she's a 2020. She is two years old. She was actually two years old on March 13th. Uh, so this is a little bit late, but uh, I wanted to at least do a two year review on her and let everybody know kind of the ins and outs of things I put on it and uh, issues I've had and uh, and go from there on it. I uh, also want to give a heads up because there's so many videos on this Honda Foreman out there that uh, I am not going to be doing any little videos too much on it any longer other than maybe trail rides. I will be doing yearly reviews on it any longer. So uh, sorry for that if that disappoints anybody but uh, I'd rather just do that. I mean unless there's something big that happens like a blowout or a crash or something of course I'll probably put that on it. But uh, I think we can do without all the little cryptic views on it. So let's go over stuff I put on it. And uh, in between all that, I'm sure I'll tell you also things that I found wrong with it. So one of the first things I put on it was the Badlands winch. And also guys, there's videos of this. Uh, everything I put on, there's videos on my channel you just got to look for it about everything I'm talking about uh, so just so you know that if you want to go find it now a lot of people also real quick that I want to say about my videos I don't put uh, links in it I think the only link I have done really well is maybe something I've done recently for the Honda Pioneer and uh, that's because they gave me the link I hate links uh, I don't get paid by links I don't want to get paid by links through Amazon so if you guys think about that if you ever go to someone's YouTube channel and you see a link in their comments that means they're getting paid from amazon or from another affiliate every time you hit that link i don't want to get paid and nor do i get paid so it, it might make it harder that you actually have to literally type in the name of the product to find it i'm sorry i make it so hard for you but i just do that because i'm not looking to get paid from the manufacturer for my videos i'm doing it because i want to do the videos so uh yeah enough of that drama let's move on so once again, the first thing I put on was the Badlands winch on it. It's a 3,500 pound winch. Uh, like I said, I have one of my earliest videos on it. it I think it's two parts on it. it gives you parts numbers, uh, uh, wire harness numbers, all that stuff on it. It doesn't really show me doing it. It also gives you KFI plate numbers on it. Uh, this 2020, I know it's still the same part numbers that would be for, for 21 or 22. So just remember that. Uh, I think even earlier, like even the 1918, it would be the same part number for even that. But uh, don't quote me on that 100%, but uh, I think it is. Uh, but have, haven't have really used it other than toying around. Haven't had the need to use it. Don't know if I really needed it on there, but uh, I think it looks cool on there. So, <laughs> so uh, I did run it out the other day just to check it and make sure there's no rust buildup or because I've been in water before and make sure there's no corrosion and make sure everything was working and check the cable out and uh, then ran it back nice and neat in there. And uh, yeah, so uh, definitely check on it, you know, make sure your winch is always working. You don't want to get out there and need it, then it don't work, especially me that doesn't ever use it. It was good for me to take it and make sure it's running. Uh, so there's something I put on it. Uh, I also put a... I think the second thing I put on it was this box. Uh, if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't put this box on it. I probably wouldn't put no box on it. I did it mainly because I saw everybody else doing it. I was always a whiner about storage. Uh, it definitely has plenty of storage in it. You can't even find this box anymore. Cabela's does have another box on it. Uh, I do have a video of that on my channel too, comparing this old box and the new box that they make now. I hope they keep manufacturing it because the new box is actually, I think, better than this box. Uh, but people go, well, why don't you wish you had it? Well, if you're running two people, it's probably a nice thing to have. If you really need the storage, it's a nice thing to have. But the thing that I've run into it is I don't like the extra weight in the back. It, it's made it where I think I've done a lot more accidents than I would have had without it. It just think about that this machine weighs almost 700 pounds I'm about 190 pounds and you're trying to manhandle this machine to keep it from leaning and then you have this thing full of another 100 pounds in it uh, or 50 pounds even which I know my my bag back here that I keep for uh incidents that thing weighs probably about 30 pounds this bag does maybe 50 probably more like 50 and uh 
then you add anything else like your little ice chest thing like this adds up and this is a lot of weight in the back if i don't know i've rode a lot and i've never had a box and i've never had issues so that's just personal preference i think i'd rather not have a box on it anymore but i'm gonna leave it on there i guess so but that's uh i think one of the second things i put on it uh this isn't the second thing i put on it but it's kind of got to do with that stability thing i did put two inch spacers on it i have a video on that too uh there is no the, not that there's no they don't have this brand at least last time i looked they were back ordered now uh, do you have other brands that have two inch spacers you just got to make sure you get the right uh, uh stud pattern and the right thread uh i did put red loctite on it everybody says no don't do that uh well, they haven't came loose and I don't see me taking them off. So uh, I think that's all about what you want to do. But I'm glad I did use red because I do ride in some rough roads and I do not want it coming loose whatsoever. Uh, but what a smart thing for me to do personally. Uh, Honda does have a narrower wheel pattern. So does Yamaha than a lot of other manufacturers. This gave me more width and stability. Once again, with that extra weight in the back, other than maybe tipping backwards or forward, it did help the side to side on it. I'm so glad I put those spacers on it. I will never take them off. And uh, yeah, it's a total different riding game on it. Uh, another thing I put on it, which I get a lot of people to ask me about this, there's this mudding bar. It's I call it just a you know old man handle to help you get on and off. I mean, I'm pulling on that and it's shaking the whole, the whole machine. It's really solid. It's made by Fly. I did get off Amazon. I think they still have that on Amazon. Like I said, I don't have any links. Uh, you just got to go and type it in there, fly mud handle or something like that, and it'll come up. Uh, but that's, I think I did it more just because I thought it was cool looking because I saw other people with them. And also it does help you grab onto it. If you're mudding a lot though, and you, like you see those guys riding in the mud that have snorkels on there and they're trying to keep their nose up to keep the snorkel up, this would really help you pull up on your quad. So for that reason, yes, me out in the desert, not so much. It's really just helping me get on and off. So uh, so that's something I put on it. Uh, the other thing I put on it is these lights. I used to love saying the name Z-Moon Lights. Everybody goes, why did I rave about these? I raved about them because they came with a wire harness already. It had a switch if you wanted to use a separate switch on it. Uh, I just liked how it came. It was just very cheap. I don't remember the money, but I have a video on it, like I said, and it was just the cheapest way to go. I did originally hook them up to the main lights, and then a friend told me hook it up to your high beam lights so you're not you're not blinding people when you're riding at night. You can turn your low beams on, and once you get past you, and put back these back on. So uh, that's all about just finding the right wire coming from your box. I wish I remember what color it was down here, but you can find it with any kind of detector whatsoever on it so that's something i put on uh uh yeah so that is pretty much it that i put on it you know uh uh i have also rolled the poor machine twice i like i said i think it's because the width it's always rolled to the side well one time side and completely over that's why it's even this got scratched up because it went head over heels both sides have scrapes on them as you can see this side's probably worse on it but uh camel kind of hides it good but uh but that's not an issue with it that's well it might have been an issue with it because like i said it didn't have a really big wheelbase on it uh shocks i had some issues with it the rear shocks on the most solid one it, it can have these ones are on uh the second setting uh, I did have it on the stiffest setting and it was making the front end feel funny, but you can also see some rub marks in there on the shocks. I don't know. I don't think they're the best, but I don't think they're the worst either. Uh, they're hanging in there. Like I said, two years old, it's still doing good on it. Uh, no issues really other than uh, just getting your right uh, positioning you want to get on it. Uh, tires on it. Yeah, you can see how the maximus maxis tires you put these these are wear bars on it they are still low so i'm still not there i'd say i maybe am half to three quarters of the way gone on the tire uh if you want to go by uh years i wouldn't do that because uh it's all about how you ride it and how much you're riding but uh i'd say probably go more by mileage so 1500 miles ain't too bad to be about three quarters of the way done 
if it lasts another 500 miles, that'll be great. So I'm hoping they last at least uh, three years old and I'll get a new set of tires on it. I don't want to do that right now. So uh, tires are doing okay on it. No complaints for it being uh, over two years old on it. It's a little bit over two years old. Uh, yeah. Uh, engine wise, I, I have a had noises and stuff in the past and a lot of old videos those have all become more of the nature of the machine especially being the 520 and uh 2020 was the first year the 520 came out uh i do get some backfires sometimes i do notice that it's all about what fuel i'm putting in it i have researched that and and have the valves done many times valves are always correct and they say it's just these are running really rich you can go about trying to fix that i just don't care it doesn't do enough for me to worry about but uh that's just uh something i always just keep an eye on like i said i think i've put super fuel in it it, it does it not at all it's regular use with regular fuel but uh, in the manual it says it can take either or so i just run what i feel like spinning at that time in it uh air filter in it uh, it's, it's funny i've had people ask me that about the air filter uh, i didn't put a unifilter in this one yet i put it in uh the pioneer i do believe it made the pioneer performance better just because it gives it more airflow i guess i can kind of show that or explain that a little bit uh meaning by airflow is that the filter has less plastic on it the uh and this is I swear this is almost the same looking air filter that's in the Pioneer, but this back part is solid plastic on it. The, uh, the unifilter is all foam all the way around the back. So I think that gives you more air intake. Look, that's this filter is probably a year old. That's as dirty as it is. Uh, I've uh, cleaned it out before, but I think the reason mine doesn't get so dirty is because I'm usually the leader. Like I do carry a, I have a video on that too, a Garmin 64, and I'm usually the leader of the pack. So I don't uh, breathe in or get, I'm not, I'm not eating the dirt, I guess you could say. I'm usually in the front. So that's probably why my air filter lasts a lot longer than the more common person does, but uh, it probably is getting ready for a clean out. But, uh, I haven't blown out the exhaust before on it. Uh, I've just never done that in years of ever owning quads, even though that's probably something I should look into. I do know that uh, I've had a, a, a cousin where she had her, she never did her brake fluid for like 10 years and it gunked up in there. And she had to end up replacing this whole master cylinder. Uh, it was only like 30 something dollars, so still pretty cheap, but still I think it's so easy to just open this up uh, you can use the paper towels because there's so little fluid in there. Soak up all the fluid. Open up your 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 bleeders here and uh, let the fluid run out. Put new fluid in. Bleed it out by by pumping it and put new fluid in. Closing it up. Maybe probably take it 20, 30 minutes to change out your fluid. I, it says on the manual two to three years, so I probably might do that soon just because I don't want that to gunk up like hers did. Uh, I have checked the front brake pads, never checked the back brake pads just because it's in that disc on it. I don't know if you guys know what that means because I have a solid rear axle. So it's uh, not disc in the drum here. I uh, assume they're okay. I have, I don't go through water too bad, but uh, I've heard people getting water in there. It might be something you might want to take a look at, especially being two years old. I just, like I said, I haven't done it. Uh, kind of be worried about taking that off because I probably would run into an issue because I put red Loctite on those. Unless I could just kind of pop it off and at least peel it back a little bit and just look inside and we're just inspecting, we're not replacing. And uh, if I had to replace it, I'd have to take it off. But at least I could probably take it and look at it and make sure they're good. But as of right now, I haven't had to. Usually you'd have to adjust these if your brake pads are wearing down because the cables would have to be made tighter. I haven't had to do that. So in my mind, I'm thinking everything's good because I haven't had to do any cable adjustment because the pads are wearing down. Uh, anybody who knows brakes, you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, I've obviously done all the fluids in the rear differential in the front. I have videos on all that. I constantly am doing the rear one just because uh, it seemed like break down really quick. That's probably just me being over, what's the word, anal? But uh, that's me. But uh, yeah. Uh, 
that's about it guys i mean that's kind of the the little ups and downs of it that i've had uh really not any big issues like i said i'm not going to do a video on little things like i said the tires i'm hoping last a year so let's do that on the, the the third year review on it i'm sorry to a lot of people they're going oh man we want to see all these little little videos on it no you'll see her out riding i don't think we need to do these any longer uh, i think a yearly review on it is what you guys need to see just to know how she's running and how she's doing i mean unless something big happened where the engine blew or something like that then of course i'd make a video but we don't need these little bitty uh videos any longer on her uh so to everybody that's been around this long uh since i've gotten this bike and started these videos that's how long my channel's been around so it's been two years thanks for sticking around uh hope you stick around any longer i do do a lot more videos on the pioneer lately uh i'm not getting rid of this foreman though i am keeping it and i will be riding bolts still so uh, don't think it's just disappearing. Like I said, I'm just not going to do review videos other than yearly now. And, uh, like I said, uh, the tires I'm hoping last year. So then I'll show you guys new tires when that time comes. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. That'd be awesome. But, uh, yeah, uh, like I always tell you guys, keep powder dry. If anybody's wondering what that's meant this whole time, it just means, you know, be well, be safe. It was an old saying back in Civil War time that uh, when you had your uh, musket guns and you had to keep uh, uh, your your powder on the gun so it would fire, you didn't want to get wet and rain because then it would uh, not fire. It was just a saying pretty much be safe and be well and, and be prepared. So that's what that always means. So uh, uh, once again, guys, thanks for being with me this long and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.